Hello, welcome back to the Farewell North devlog. It's been a little bit of a wait since the last entry and I apologize for that, but if I'm honest the last month hasn't been the most productive and I've run into a couple roadblocks along the way that I could use your help with. So let's get into the devlog and I'll show you what issues I'm having. So what I was supposed to be working on this month was primarily the monster design. And I did a little bit of work on this early in the month, but I kind of hit roadblock after roadblock with it and got a little bit frustrated. So I decided to kind of distract myself with some other tasks that probably weren't as high priority. Some of these worked out well, some not so well. So maybe let's look at the not so well first. One thing that I spent a good deal of time on that probably could have been better served elsewhere was this idea of auto jumping. So you can see here in the bottom screen these red sensors coming out from the dog. And basically the idea here is that they're constantly searching for something to jump on. And as you approach any surface that is deemed suitable, based on like the height and the landing radius and all that kind of stuff, it would just automatically jump, as opposed to you have to press a jump button. In my mind, this kind of would have been a very smooth way of running around and kind of quickly navigating the environment. And I even went so far as to put this into the tutorial, but it didn't really pan out that way. It was very, it was a little bit too clunky. And in the end, I decided to basically just go back to the, the usual kind of press A to jump. And there are still different jump animations based on how fast you're going. But aside from that, it's just a pretty standard jump now. And honestly, I think that's kind of better. It just gives you more freedom as a player and it gives you more to actually do. I still might use that kind of auto jumping system to help assist jumps. So if there's a kind of suitable landing spot in the area, it might automatically jump there. But for now, I've completely removed it from the game. Of course, that's not to say that the whole month was wasted. As I'm looking back on the footage now, there was a lot of good work done. So you can see here, this is the old memory and lantern sequence. So you've got this kind of magic stone and she approaches it and then the memory plays out behind her. This had worked well for a long time, but it was time for something a little bit more grounded into the story. So those, those kind of magical stones didn't really fit in very well. And the fact that the memory was playing out behind the girl and she wasn't actually looking at it kind of misconstrued the purpose of, of having them in the game. So I decided to go in a different direction and replace the runes with a campsite. So you can see here, this one's this pretty simple one with just a little campfire, but this allows the girl to actually like sit in the memory and be more immersed in it. And part of the story that I haven't really talked about is that this isn't the first time the girl has done this hike or this journey through the islands. And so maybe these are kind of campsites that she, she had stayed at in the past and that's kind of hoping to relive the memory. But I think this is a little bit more grounded. It fits more with the story and I think the visuals can be a little bit more interesting as well as the campsites themselves, it kind of more looks like a checkpoint, if that makes sense. There's certainly still work to be done here on the memories themselves, so I haven't really touched on the visuals of them since the initial implementation, which was a few months back. In particular, the way that they move and the way that they animate into the fire could be much improved. However, I think for now it's good enough and it's time to move on to some more important tasks. The other thing that a lot of my time went to this month was reimagining the lanterns from just the last video. So in the last video I showed you these little lanterns that could be kind of pinged and then they would light up and temporarily restore color to the nearby area. So I still think this works really well as a game mechanic. However, the little lanterns themselves weren't quite right. So there's a couple issues with these. One, similar to the runestone where the memories play out, they don't actually fit into the game. They don't really have any purpose in the environment. They're just arbitrary. And the other thing is that they're too stationary. So this is pretty limiting in terms of puzzle and level design because you can't really build on top of that. They just stand there. They always have to stand right next to the object that you're trying to activate. So in, the, in this instance, the gate. And you can't really do much interesting with that. So I wanted to rethink how this was going to work. On top of that, the color is supposed to be representative of the girl's emotional state. So I needed something that's a little bit more uplifting and something that would make sense that it's making her happy. While I was thinking about a solution for this, I did incorporate a number of elements of feedback from the last video. So I've improved the way that the easing and everything works on the, the color ping and the way that it blends with other color emitting points. So there were some, still some visual artifacts in the last video. That's all been smoothed out. And the other thing was the audio. So a lot of people mentioned that they liked the idea of the audio, but the execution wasn't quite right. And I completely agree. So I'm really excited to say that I brought on John, a local Edinburgh composer, to help take the audio of the project to the next level. So we've already started working together and John has some amazing ideas of how that we can do some really dynamic audio and really make the music an ever-changing part of the game. So if you want to get a feel for John's style, I would recommend checking out his Spotify. I'll leave a link down in the description. I particularly like this song, Reflections of a Willow. And yeah, so stay tuned for more in the future. So back to these lanterns. So again, I needed something that would be a little bit more dynamic and something that can move around. And I was thinking about these frozen birds that I'd always had that were basically idle until color was restored. 
I thought about the fact that you could have wildlife throughout the game, you could kind of ping them, you could bring them back to life, and this would actually make sense. The girl is kind of an outdoorsy person, the you know wildlife is obviously a big part of hiking, and it would make sense that this would kind of give her a moment of happiness to see these animals. So this idea kind of checked all my boxes because it fit really well within the theme of the game, and everyone's been asking for more wildlife anyways, so this gives me a good excuse to do that. So since then I've been working on a number of different ways that you can use the wildlife to solve issues in the environment or to kind of unlock progress. So here you can see this fox kind of revealing the bridge, not just restoring color to it, but revealing it as it runs across. And this allows for a lot more interesting environmental uh, puzzles than the lanterns allowed for, because they, the animals are actually moving around, right? So it's, I think the idea is, is much stronger, but there's still some problems with this. The biggest problem I'm trying to solve right now is how you actually activate them. So you could, there's a couple schools of thought here. One, you could just basically ping one at a time and have to activate all of them in the group. That can be pretty frustrating though if you're talking about a flock of say 20 birds and you've got here, you know, 90% of them unlocked but there's just a couple still floating there. If you want to actually use this as some sort of way to unlock progress, is one enough? Do you have to get the whole group? It just makes it a little bit tricky. The other idea would be to, you just unlock one and it kind of causes a chain reaction and they all become unlocked. I think that's one of the stronger ideas, but it's still not quite right, because it just makes things pretty easy if you just have to get one of them. And again, it goes back to a similar problem with the lanterns, which is that it's hard to build on that, right? If it's so easy that you just have to go find the bird, unlock one of them, and then the whole flock is unlocked, there's not a whole lot you can do to build on top of that to add complexity. So it's, it's one of the stronger ideas, but it's still not quite right. Another problem with this that I needed to solve was that there's a vertical limit to the, the color pinging effect. So if you have animals that are above you like a bird, you need some way to see what's in range and what's not. Otherwise, it's pretty difficult for the player to understand why they are or are not activating a bird. So I added this kind of bubble around the effect, and the idea being that it's kind of like coloring the air as well. I don't think it's quite right, to be completely honest. I'm going to have to revisit this for sure. But it does solve two problems. One, the vertical range, and two, in the colored world there was no real indication that you were doing anything, aside from the sound effects. So this kind of solves two problems, but again it's it's one of those things this month where it just didn't quite pan out the way I had it in my head. So there's going to be some more work to do there. So the final idea I had was to have some sort of sensor with a visual effect that is, is what you do to activate the entire group. So you can see here this little sphere that's just floating there of course this would need to have more of an interesting visual effect this is just a prototype but the idea is that if you activate that sensor then the whole group becomes unlocked and you can have these sensors kind of scattered throughout the environment maybe you know for a flock of 20 birds you might have three sensors and each one only locks a portion of the flock and you might maybe have to do a little bit of platforming a little bit of exploration to find the sensors so i think this gives the most opportunity for interesting level design but it does have problems as well one being it's a little bit magical. I'm not sure how well it fits into the game. So yeah, leave your comments down below. Let me know what you think. Do you like this sensor idea? Do you prefer the chain reaction where you just have to activate one of the animals and the whole group becomes unlocked? Or would you prefer to have to track down each individual animal and activate all of them in order to unlock the whole flock? I kind of know the, the direction I want to go in my head, but it's a pretty big decision. So I definitely want to get all your different thoughts and opinions on this, get some different perspectives, and yeah, so definitely don't be shy, leave, leave your thoughts down below. So I spent a lot of time this video talking about what hasn't been working so well, but one thing that's been amazing has been the community support. So you guys on Discord have been so helpful with different ideas, giving great feedback, sharing awesome pet pictures, and one of the most interesting things has been the localization. So we started a whole uh, process of localizing the game to a number of different languages. We've got about a dozen languages in progress now. We've even got Arabic with right to left support and a community member made an awesome Arabic logo for the game, which is really, really cool. It's just great to see that, that we're getting support for all these different languages and I'm so excited about having that. So yeah, if you want to help out uh, translate the game or you want to see it in your own language, join the Discord. I'll leave a link down in the description and we'll, we'll, we can get support for that language at the game. And another thing that's been awesome has been um, community member Manuel actually redid the entire website. So the Farewell North website was in dire need of update. And Manuel kind of took it on, on his own to create an awesome website for the game, bringing over all the content from the old website, but presenting it in a much better way. So he's even put a nice big wishlist now button right at the top right, and you knew this plug was coming. 
If you click that button, you're taken right to the Steam page where you can, you guessed it, wishlist the game. It really does help a lot. I can't stress that enough. And yeah, go check out the website that Manuel did because I'm, I'm still just blown away that he did that. I think that's so cool. So yeah, that's all for this one, guys. Please do all the YouTube algorithm stuff. You know the drill. Like, comment, subscribe. And be sure to leave your comments about the animal activation down below or come chat on Discord about it. That's something I'm very keen to get your thoughts on, so I really want to get all your opinions on that. In any case, that's all for this one, and I'll see you next time. Bye for now.